So before this video gets started, I wanted to give you guys on YouTube uh, a quick rundown of what happened between this episode and the last episode, that being episode 10, uh, that went up on YouTube. Because I did a stream between episodes 10 and this episode, episode 11, that you guys are not going to see. The reason for that is that the stream is mostly just me moving things. Like I basically just take everything out of the 5x5x5 five by five by five compact machine that we were in at the end of the last stream and move it all over into this 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine compact machine that we made at the end of the last episode. And so real quick here, before the episode starts, I'm just going to give you guys a rundown of where everything is so that you're not completely out of the loop as to, uh, as to what's going on here. So essentially what I've done is I've taken the 9x9 nine nine compact machine that we have and I've split it into two floors. So this is the top floor. And it essentially just houses our crafting grid and our disk drive for our refined storage system. Uh, we also have a few uh, nuclear craft machines, but these are not currently uh, connected to power. They're just kind of down um, while we find somewhere else to put them. We have our nuclear furnace here for some fast smelting as and when we need it. And then we also have these two compact machines, one of which is still holding our crusher and our small compactor. The other one is still holding our metal press and our workbench. So those are still the same as they were before. Uh, they're just now above this uh, crafting grid. Again, probably a temporary placement while we find somewhere else to put that stuff. Uh, down here is where things really get interesting. So we of course have our four miniaturization field projectors. We set these up at the end of the last episode. Uh, I am going to temporarily uh, move one of those just to get rid of the animation in the middle. Uh, but the key thing to, uh, I guess, take away here is that you can build things uh, in front of the field projectors and they do still work. So you'll see we have some uh, uh, conduits all over the place. And I think you can even put blocks down uh, like directly in front of them and they will still work. So long as you don't build anything in this kind of five by five area uh, around the machine, if that makes sense. If I try and put something uh, here, the whole thing stops working. But if I move that back by one, I think that does work uh, just fine. So there is a little bit of uh, a space you can't use, but for the most part, you can build uh, in front of these. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same, but just moved. So for example, over here, we have our compact machine that is making and using pickaxes uh, to generate all of these resources. So as per usual, the resources are made, collected by the nullifier and then pumped out and uh, distributed amongst these caches. Uh, we of course have the retriever pulling the iron grit uh, back in to make more iron pickaxes uh, and then everything else here is basically the same uh, with the lava from the magma crucible which is right there uh, being placed on the back in that portable hardened tank um, over here we have our new fission reactor that we set up at the end of the last episode uh, that is of course producing uh, just shy of 2000 redstone flux per tick and then we have this kind of long winding leadstone flux duct that goes all the way around the room and powers basically everything um, from that one fission reactor uh, over here, we have our, you know, farming setup. Now, uh, previously, our two garden cloches were in kind of the main hub room with us. What we did in the last stream is this was the 5x5 five five room that we used to be in. And so we took everything out of that 5x5 five five room, uh, but left the cloches in there. So now uh, if we head on in, uh, this is a room just for garden cloches. We made two more. So we now have four. In the middle there, we have an infinite water source from Nuclear Craft. If I go ahead and type in a water source, it's this guy right here. It produces 10 millibuckets of water constantly and is fairly easy to make for basic plating, two tin and two water buckets. Uh, that pumps water directly into the bottom of all of these garden cloches. Uh, these are all getting power from a tunnel on the roof, which of course connects uh, to that fission reactor. Uh, right now we have wheat, we have hemp seeds, and we have the bonsai saplings growing. That one at the back there is currently empty. And as per usual, the bonsai saplings are being processed in the sawmill into oak planks and uh, and sawdust. That is all being pulled by this retriever out and into this chest right here. Uh, then things are pulled by the server into their respective crates uh, for us to grab at a, uh, a later date. And of course, up here at the top, we have that uh, retrieval node right about there that's pulling the wood from here uh, for the sticks for the pickaxes. So again, all kind of the same stuff, but just reorganized a little bit. Uh, we also have this guy down here. This is our uh, cook oven uh, squeezer blast furnace room that we had before. Uh, the only difference here is that previously we had our tree farm in a small 7x7 compact machine uh, right there. Now that tree farm has been moved over to here. And the reason for that is that we did create uh, one new setup in the last stream, and that is this system here uh, for creating coal coke. Because as you'll know, if you've watched any of the previous episodes, the coke ovens are unbearably slow. They take way too long uh, to produce coal coke, and we need quite a lot of that coal coke if we're going to get a large number of diamond nuggets. And so what we have here is we have our tree farm, which is, of course, producing charcoal. That then goes through into a manufacturing that turns the charcoal 
into pulverized charcoal that then goes down into another manufacturing that turns the pulverized charcoal into graphite dust and then finally down into a pressurizer um, all from nuclear craft that turns the graphite dust into coal so we're basically turning charcoal into coal that coal then goes into a redstone furnace that has been upgraded with the pyrolytic conversion augment which allows for creosote production so now uh, with this augment our redstone furnace can turn coal into coal coke um, it does drastically decrease the power usage. Um, I think by default, this thing uses three redstone flux per tick, and so it's quite slow. Uh, we did upgrade this twice. We put a hardened and a reinforced upgrade kit on, uh, and we also put in another auxiliary reception coil to increase the power a little bit. It's still fairly slow, but it is definitely much, much faster uh, and also takes up less space than the coke ovens. And then, of course, the cold coke is uh, pumped out to the top there. And on the right, we have a nullifier, which basically destroys anything that is put in it, whether it's items or fluids. And uh, right now, of course, we have a uh, fluid duct pulling the creosote out of there into the nullifier so that this can continue working and doesn't get backed up when the, uh, the creosote tank gets full. And other than that, I think the only other new thing that we have is the induction smelter here. This is another machine from Thermal Expansion uh, that we have been using to make hardened glass, that being uh, this guy right here. Previously, we made it with the pyrolithium dust, obsidian, and lead. Now, we can make it by just putting lead dust and pulverized obsidian into the induction smelter, and that gets us the two hardened glass much, much easier, albeit a little bit slower uh, than just crafting with the pyrolithium dust, but the pyrolithium dust, you know, requires blaze rods, and then we'd have to burn steel rods and all that kind of uh, shenanigans. Now, uh, it's significantly less resources, um, albeit a little bit more time and a little bit more redstone flux. Um, but yeah, I think that is pretty much everything. Again, most of the stuff is still exactly the same as it was before, just reorganized, rearranged uh, into this new 9x9 room. The only truly new things are the, uh, the cold clock setup and the induction smelter. Everything else is exactly the same as it was before, uh, but just in a new position. And so without further ado, here is the next episode of Compact Claustrophobia. In the last stream, we reorganized a lot of stuff. We moved all of our items out of uh, this little 5x5 compact machine here. We repurposed this 5x5 uh, into a room for our garden cloches. And basically everything else here is pretty much the same. We've still got our little pickaxe system over here, which is a little bit clogged and uh, likely due to the fact that uh, this uranium grit cache here is, uh, is filling up and maybe blocking the system. So that is something we're going to have to work on uh, very soon here. Now, <laughs> real quick, before we get started, people have told me that if I put a lever down, Next to the miniaturization field projector, I can stop the animation. Because as much as I do love the animation, I would love to, like, it, it's right in the middle of this area where all of our machines are. So I think for now, when we're not using it, it's a, it probably makes sense uh, to not have that online. But at the end of the last stream, we set up this system over here uh, to overhaul and replace our coal coke making production line because previously we had our tree farm which is still the same it's still up here it's still the same setup we had before uh, this is growing and cutting down trees and it's smelting the wood from those trees into charcoal previously that charcoal was being sent through to coke ovens those coke ovens were very slowly processing that coke uh, that charcoal into coal coke which we then used of course to make hop graphite dust hop graphite ingots and then blow up uh, and then blowing that hop graphite ingot up to make uh, diamond nuggets now of course, the bottleneck in all of that was the coke oven. And so what we did at the end of the last stream is we put together this little system over here with two manufacturers and one pressurizer to turn charcoal into regular coal, pressurize it, and then smelt it in the redstone furnace using this guy right here, the pyrolytic conversion augment, which allows the redstone furnace to turn normal coal into coal coke. And I'm happy to report that since the end of the last stream, we now have a whopping 600 and at 67 coal coke, which is insane compared to the uh, the normal amount that we have, which is usually uh, kind of between one and 200 uh, like with one day's worth of, uh, of coal coke operations. I'm very happy uh, with the amount of, of coal coke we have there, and that should make getting diamond nuggets much, much easier uh, going forward, especially for things like the uh, external storage, which we so desperately need on all of our caches. You know, we need all of these construction cores, and so getting those going forward really shouldn't be too hard now, chat. Hopefully. The only problem with getting things like this construction core going forward is that we need the process of binding. The process of binding requires porcelain clay, which requires both bone meal and clay, neither of which we have automated. And so the, one of the first things that we're going to do in today's stream is automate the production of dust 
uh, which also involves automating the production of sand. And then we're going to automate the sifting of that dust to get the uh, the clay and automate the uh, putting of that dust into barrels with water uh, to automate the clay as uh, as well. Uh, so I think, Chad, we do have a spare 5x5 five five, uh, compact machine lying around somewhere. Oh, we have a spare 7x7 seven seven compact machine uh, lying around right here. I think I might use this as our automation machine for certain resources it doesn't really need to be that big seven by seven is pretty huge but i also don't think that i can fit it into a, a three by three compact machine so you know what sure we'll go with the seven by seven we have it lying around uh, we can make that work so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to produce cobblestone or the plan at least here is to produce cobblestone and then to put that cobblestone through the manufacturing from nuclear craft that will turn that cobblestone into sand I do want to save some of the sand, like I want the system to produce sand so we have it uh, ready to go when we need it. Uh, we might also automate the production of glass as well and have like a cache full of glass for when we need glass going forward. Um, and then from there, we're going to put the sand into a pulverizer because I believe that is the only way uh, that we can make dust automatically outside of the use of these ex nihilo hammers, which we could automate, but it's a little easier now that we have the redstone flux uh, to automate the uh, pulverizer here. So we're going to have a manufacturing going into a pulverizer to make that dust. The dust is then going to be split into two batches. One batch is going to be sifted, and that will, of course, get us the bone meal, as well as a nice backup source of sulfur for making, like, you know, more TNT and whatnot in the future. And the other half of the dust is going to go into one of our barrels with water to make blocks of clay, which I will then probably um, auto craft back down into, uh, into regular clay, just so that we have it, you know, in a more usable form uh, for when we actually need it. And I think I probably might also end up automating obsidian in the same compact machine as well, because we do have, uh, of course, this big tank full of lava uh, that's being made from the magma crucible in here. And we do need to automate obsidian if we're gonna get to the point where we can automate making ender pearls because you need 26 uh, obsidian to make one ender pearl. So that is the plan. Before I do that though, this system here is clogging up due to a couple of these machines being kind of on the brink uh, of being full and with the uranium grid especially uh, already past that brink so uh, i think we did begin smelting up a large amount of invar at the end of the last stream we did indeed and so making a bunch of uh, hardened upgrade kits really shouldn't be uh, too difficult however i am fairly certain that we are now out of uh, bronze and so much like we did with invar and electrum i think i'm also going to go ahead and basically make like four stacks of bronze here I think something like this. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll just smell all that up so we've got the bronze ready to go should we need it in the, in the near future. All right, so we'll make some uh, bronze gears, like so. I'll make a few of these now because we seem to need quite a few of them. And I think I might try and just upgrade basically all of our um, of our caches down here, two hardened caches. That ups our capacity to 80,000 and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll keep us chugging along for, uh, for quite some time. That one's already upgraded. Good stuff. We might as well upgrade this one while we're at it. Uh, this one is already full, so we'll do that. These two can also get upgrades, and it looks like wheat is going to fill up before seeds, and so I'll we'll use our last one there as well. Nice. All right, that should hopefully uh, slowly but surely kind of clear out uh, this backlog here. Um, it might actually be worth us doing that manually because we do already have a little bit of uh, a bottleneck uh, underneath this, so maybe me just taking out you know, a few of these to kind of speed the process up there might help just a smidge. Beautiful. Do we have what it takes to make a manufacturer? I think we most certainly should. We might be a little light on uh, lead. We did use quite a bit of it uh, at the end of the last video. And uh, as always, we're also uh, quite low on actual space as well inside of our system. But that is uh, a problem that's not, hopefully not going to be too difficult to fix. And hopefully uh, one that we can fix by the end of today's stream once we have uh, more of that bone meal ready to go. So a piston, we need one of these uh, copper solenoids, which you might already have in the system actually uh, from a previous machine. But uh, once that is done, we just need a little bit of lead. And I think we do also need to look into uh, automating the smelting of most of what we have here. Um, I think, you know, having like lead's not really used too much in grit form, uh, if at all. So I think automating the smelting of that uh, so we just have lead ingots ready to go is, is probably going to be beneficial to us. For now, though, this uh, uranium furnace does make smelting nice and quick. So there's a the manufacturing. We also need the pulverizer, which once again is not a particularly uh, difficult recipe whatsoever. So we'll go ahead and throw one of those together. And then after that, we need one more igneous extruder, which again, I don't think is going to be too bad. So we should go and make two machine frames if we have the glass for it, which surprisingly we do. I feel like we, we never have glass, but 
for once we actually uh, are prepared for that, which is very nice indeed. And then just a little bit more in the way of you. And that should be a pulverizer. Nice. So we'll follow that up, of course, with the uh, uh, Igneous Extruder. Like so. Now, my original plan here, chat, was to use this upgrade in the top right here, the uh, Clastic Deposition, uh, because this allows you to generate sand directly. So instead of generating cobblestone and then pulverizing it uh, into, or manufacturing it, I should say, uh, into sand with the manufacturing, you can use the Clastic Deposition augment to just generate sand inside of the Igneous Extruder. However, the recipe for making the Clastic Deposition uh, requires this uh, Erothium Dust, which also requires Blitz Powder, which as of right now, we don't have a way to get. We could look at making it with the uh, Fluid Transfer, uh, the Fluid Transposer here, with the uh, Nitre and Liquid XP, but we also don't really have that much uh, in the way of XP. And so I think for now, uh, given that we have uh, quite a nice amount of Redstone Flux coming from our Fission Reactor, it probably makes sense uh, to just do it with the extra machine, right? Just use the uh, the pulverizer um, and the igneous extruder as opposed to uh, trying to do it with the trying to like do it all in one machine. Did I make this? I didn't. There we go. Nice. All right. So the next question, chat, is where in the world do I want to put this machine? And that's a good question. I think I kind of want it to be somewhere near the lava here if we are going to try and make obsidian as well. Other than that, though, I don't really think it matters where it goes. Like, I think we could potentially just put it maybe here. I was going to say here. It could even go there, maybe, like, right, like there. Because I want to get power into that. So I think one leadstone flux duct coming down into that would be fine. And then just, like, a fluid duct pumping lava in there should also be fine. And then the product that comes out can maybe come out of either this left-hand side and then into some caches, maybe, or on the, on the bottom... Uh, bottom side as well. Yeah, we'll take our stone barrel in. Of course, it's going to go in there anyway. Uh, we do have, I think, some hardened fluid ducts already, so I might as well go ahead and put down um, our first one. Because we know where that's going to go. Like that. And then let's quickly grab some leadstone flux ducts. I don't know if we're going to need some item ducts, but I'll take some just in case, as well as potentially a, a few servos as well just so we can move things from machine to machine. And then, of course, to get the actual system up and running, we do also need a bucket of lava and a bucket of water, both of which, thankfully, uh, we should have fairly easy access to. Our lava is, of course, right here. And water-wise, we do have um, unlimited water inside of our um, cloche area, but we can't actually access that uh, unlimited water source block because it is in, uh, like, between all of the garden cloches. So I'm going to try, if I can, to maybe, like, get that, middle block of water. I don't know if I can actually get under there. Is this um working as intended? Okay, that seems <laughs> that seems very much so uh, not doable. Yeah, there's no what in the world? There's like no source block in the middle chat. How bizarre. There we go. <laughs> what in the world? That was very weird. Like, it looked like there was water there, but it wasn't forming that uh, that unlimited source block. It was very interesting. Uh, hey, Isaac, what are you using to fertilize the trees with the auto clicker? So we have here a watering can set to shift right click very quickly on the water here, which triggers uh, the it speeds up the growth picks of the, uh, of the sapling. However, it's... Uh, it's a little janky. Can you make a 2x2 two two water source? We definitely can. And I'll give it a try. It might fix our issues here. Let me try this. So if I move you here, let's move you. Once the tree's gone. Like to there. And then let's kind of re... Orient this a little bit, I guess. Like that. Like maybe having both a, a three by one and a two by two might give us the uh, might give us like the <laughs> the system that will actually work. I 
think this glitches out a little bit. Maybe when you use the carry on mod, like I just did when you uh, when you shift right click to move something as opposed to picking it up. Um, I find that sometimes when I put these back down, they don't work. Although maybe this is just not working in general. Oh no, there we go. All right, <laughs> that was very odd, but uh, it is working, which is fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that. Uh, yeah, hopefully that continues to work. We'll uh, check in on it every now and again uh, and see if that, uh, that water source continues to uh, to work well. If not, we might have to look at uh, some kind of substitution for the watering can method, but um, we'll find out. So let's go ahead and jump in our normal compact machine. All right, how do I want to do this chat? Let's start with, uh, of course, the igneous extruder. So power is required, and I think we'll do something maybe just like this, and we'll have power come in from there. Uh, is that already connected? It's not. Okay, I was going to say it. <laughs> if that's already connected, that's incredible. But then we'll have our igneous extruder, like so. That is going to produce the cobblestone, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll set it to cobblestone, like so. We'll throw in the lava and the water, and then we'll have that output on the right-hand side. That is then going to turn all of that into sand in the manufacturing. I then f think from there, we probably want to switch to item ducts because this can't alter output, uh, but also we want to split the sand. I want some of the sand, half of the sand, uh, to go through into this pulverizer. That's going to turn that sand into dust. And then I want another half to go probably directly up um, into a cache uh, or more likely just straight out uh, into a tunnel so we can have a cache on the outside uh, with sand, right? Because we need so much sand, um, whether it's just for crafting or for making glass, sand is always needed and having it ready to go is gonna make life a lot easier. Then coming out the pulverizer, we're gonna have dust. That dust is then going to be split in two. Half of that dust is gonna get sifted. We are gonna need another auto clicker uh, for that to work. Uh, and also this is gonna get a little janky here, chat, but something like that maybe might work. Uh, but we're gonna have this come out uh, half of it is going to get sifted. The other half is going to go into uh, the stone barrel here with water. So uh, the stone barrel, I think we can probably just put in the corner here. And actually, I'm thinking about where I want to put the... Um, I'm thinking about where I want things to leave. I think I want everything where possible to go out of one tunnel, right? I want all of our caches, all of the final products, in this case, those being uh, bone meal, clay, and sand. I want all of those in caches out in the main hub area, right? And so I think I want them all going out of one kind of central hub. So we'll have you there. We are going to need to put water above that, but that's fine. And we're also going to, actually that's not gonna work, Chet, because it needs to have at the very least a uh, hopper beneath it to pull uh, the actual clay out. So we'll do something like that. Let's go get a sieve and also let's go get some auto clickers to, uh, to automatically use that sieve, shall we? I think we should already have a sieve. We do. I don't think we have the string mesh for it. We don't. We upgraded to an iron stiffened mesh, but uh, nevertheless, we do now have um, an absolute ton of uh, hemp down here. So getting uh, string now is significantly easier than it was at the start of the pack, which I'm very happy about. Uh, you could totally pull out the sides of the barrel. Ooh, that is true, actually. We could pull out of the, uh, the side of the barrel instead of the bottom. That would also definitely work. All right, I think that's almost everything, chat. Let's go take a look. Let's also uh, actually connect power up to this guy. And remember, it's the south side. That's where the power is coming in from. So this needs to be switched to south, like so. Uh, so that is now making cobblestone. Fantastic. That is being manufactured over here. We could, of course, put uh, some speed and energy upgrades into there. I think we have both speed and energy upgrades available in our system. And uh, in fact, I was going to put some speed and energy upgrades into the system for making uh, coal coke, but seemingly they are not required. So uh, for now, I'll, I'll just leave that system doing its thing because we don't really need that much more coal coke, um, at least not at this moment in time. That's not, I always go the wrong way there. There we go. So in here, we'll just go ahead and we'll throw in, uh, I guess, 15 of each. Like that. Beautiful. That's making sand significantly faster. That sand should then, via the use of a, a server, which we might have to upgrade, we'll see, uh, send that sand over into the pulverizer. The pulverizer does have uh, power now. <laughs> so that's going to go ahead and, uh, and turn that into dust. Then, of course, the dust is going to go over uh, to the stone barrel here. And I do like the chat's suggestion of actually uh, not using a hopper here. So I will do this and this. 
And then we'll, uh, we'll just pull out of this side like that. Yes, that's fine. And then we'll have this here, not connected there. And we'll have that going to an auto clicker connected to a sieve. Nice. So we should be able to set the output here like this. And I think this will 50-50 by default. I think half the sand uh, will end up in the stone barrel. And I think uh, the rest will end up in the, uh, the auto clicker. Now, unlike the creation of obsidian, you do actually have to have um, water being pumped into here on a, a permanent basis. And so it is definitely going to be, I think, worthwhile us getting another one of those unlimited water sources from nuclear craft. Which are not too difficult to make. I'm fairly certain we've already taken to make some more basic plating. And uh, all we need after that is two more buckets of water, um, of which I'm fairly certain we actually get the uh, bucket itself back. It's just the water that you uh, that you lose. Don't you need a server that can do round robin things? Mm, I, see, I'm not sure actually. I know you. I know there is an option on servers to go round robin, but I think if it's set up like that by default, it might auto do round robin. I'm actually not too sure. I don't think it will do 50-50, more like 75-25, I think, because item ducks go to the shortest path first more often. Mm, I think you might be right. Okay, in that case then, chat, let's go ahead and upgrade our server. We do have, it, it's a very easy upgrade. In fact, I'm going to upgrade both of these right away. We'll go straight up to the uh, Electrum tier. Because Twitch chat has handily pointed out that down here, the item ducks might take their the shortest path, so they might always try to go here before they go here. Uh, whereas if we put in a reinforced server and set that to round robin, it's always going to split that 50-50 uh, between the two. So I think from there, uh, we do, of course, still need to make that uh, unlimited water source. Like so. But once we have that, I'm pretty sure that the dust system is pretty much good to go. I think just putting that there should put water in here. It does indeed. I'm a little concerned about the 800. There we go. That's 1,000. And uh, that should be clear. Nice. So the clay is then going to come out of there. Uh, you can see right now dust is going in there. Uh, the clay is going to be made a little slower than the dust, but I think that's fine. Uh, this definitely does want to have power because I want that sifting a lot faster than it is currently sifting. There is a limit on how fast you can sift. Like, I don't think setting this to 8 is going to make it that much quicker. It does make it quite a bit quicker, but... We do have to, of course, find a middle ground between ultra speed and uh, the amount of power that we currently have available to us. And then, of course, I think for collection, we'll just go once again uh, with our trusty uh, vacuumulator, which should be able to pick all of that uh, dust, uh, all of that bone meal up, and of course, any sulfur that comes along with it, and uh, store it in some uh, in some nearby caches. There we go. All right. So now we have the vacuumulator chat. I think we're pretty much there. So we can pop in here, and uh, I guess we could maybe just put this on the wall. You know what, no, I kind of like that right there. We might end up moving that because it's quite space inefficient, uh, but that should collect pretty much everything uh, in front of it, uh, which really should only be the two things that we're trying to produce. Now, of course, our bottleneck here is the pulverizer, quite apparently so. The manufacturing in the, uh, igneous, igne in the igneous extruder, can't say that word, are more than fast enough right now. So our pulverizer is the, uh, the choke point, and thankfully, we did make the um, induction smelter in the last stream, so we should... I think be able to go all the way up to a hardened upgrade kit. Not a hardened upgrade kit. A um, reinforced upgrade kit. A hardened upgrade kit would be quite standard. Oh, we're just missing the Electrum, which we should have over here. Nice. All right. And while we're at it, we do get uh, two uh, speed upgrades or two augment slots with that, so we might as well, I feel, go ahead and uh, craft up two of these um, reception coil augments, which will make our pulverizer even faster. Because I don't really think there's uh, such thing as too fast right now. So boom, and boom, boom, and boom. So long as we're using too much redstone flux per tick, which right now it doesn't seem like we're doing, I think everything should be pretty much good to go there. So uh, clay is being made. Uh, let's go and get three, or I guess four caches. One for sand, one for clay, one for bone meal, and one for sulfur. So we're going to have one for now right there. That'll probably end up getting... Uh, the, yeah, that's fine. We can have one there. We can have one for clay right about there. And then we can have uh, two, I guess, either side of here. Yeah, let's just do like this and like this. 
nice. Again, not the most space efficient uh, right now, but uh, that's fine. Set that to extract, always active. Uh, that should start pulling out clear blocks and thus making more clear blocks. And then we'll throw bone meal in you, give that a lock. We'll put sulfur in you. Go ahead and give that a lock as well. And there we go. That's coming in nice and fast. Now, I will speed this up just a little bit here. And I guess if we really wanted to, we could even go as far as to put down like another clicker maybe. Is that worth it? Because this uses 2.5 times as much redstone flux. Yeah, and it goes down by, yeah, 2.5 times. Okay, so yeah, but we're not making the power, right? So we've got to go back to six, unfortunately. All right. That should be fine, chat. Everything seems to be chugging along quite nicely here. Um, we're actually getting more than I uh, than I thought we would. This is also very quickly tanking, uh, tanking through the power. Maybe we should take out some speed upgrades. I'm actually not quite sure. Oh, no, of course. All right, so a problem, chat. A problem that I was warned about ahead of time, but I have failed to remember up until now, is that we are currently bottlenecked by our conduits. Because ever since we upgraded, I think over here, to our new reactor, our new reactor produces uh, just shy of 2,000 redstone flux per tick. But the uh, leadstone conduits that we're using can only carry a maximum of 1,000 redstone flux per tick. So we need to upgrade our power infrastructure if we're actually going to be, to be able to use the, the full 2,000 redstone flux per tick generated uh, by our fission reactor. There we go, nice. Okay, so we've got 39 hardened flux flux. These can transfer up to 4,000 redstone flux per tick, which is very nice indeed. So now we can just do something like this and actually start to harness the uh, the full power potential of our, um, of our reactor. How did I do this? Is a good question. I think we just came over the top, right? Like that? Yes, I think that's correct. And of course, we'd have to upgrade all of them because I don't think, like, all of the machines in here in total don't use more than a thousand. Like, this uses 20. Uh, this is using 320. They might be getting close, though. This is using 120. So we got, uh, uh, what, 440 plus 20 is 460. Uh, 460 plus 100 is 560. Uh, so yeah, the fact that all of these machines total don't use more than a thousand means we don't have to upgrade uh, these conduits. We just have to make sure uh, that, you know, it's the power is, is able to get here. Previously, only 1000 was coming out of this point and it was probably all getting used up, you know, before it even got uh, to that end location there. So hopefully now these machines are all getting uh, more than enough power and we might even be able to speed this up um, a little bit if we, uh, if we wanted to. Uh, the sand there is coming in nice and fast, which is always good. Um, I am going to go ahead and upgrade this here to a round robin servo just to make sure that that uh, sand is evenly distributed amongst the uh, pulverizer and the cache. So once again, we'll just dump all of you out. We'll go ahead and do this. And then single piece of Electrum gets the job done in terms of making a reinforced server. And that should chat, I think be pretty much everything apart from Obsidian automated in here. So you always active and round robin. Nice. We could always put more speed upgrades in here and more energy upgrades as well. If uh, if this becomes the bottleneck, which it looks like it might be now. Looks like it's not coming out of here fast enough and it is sifting quicker than it's being made. Uh, we do need to make sure that these are set to output on the left and right. So the uh, bone meal and the sulfur actually go to the correct location. You should be set to round robin. There we go. And then back up here, we can turn our gold into pressure plates, at least a few of them. And we can turn those pressure plates into energy upgrades. Nice. Okay. Eight more, I think, should be enough for now. We can, of course, make more in the future. We have uh, quite a large amount of uh, nether quartz, and getting more nether quartz is uh, nice and easy with those boron pickaxes, which I would like to automate uh, as well at some point. But for now, we will throw you in there. I'll, uh, I'll take them out. I'll make sure they are on equal footing, so 23 and 23. We're now making that sand a nice little bit faster, uh, and thus now we've we've moved the bottleneck once again uh, to our pulverizer, which I think for now is, is about as fast um, as it could be. We could, of course, make a second pulverizer uh, if we really wanted to uh, speed this up, but uh, hopefully I think this should be um, uh, A-OK. -okay. You know, we're not making bone meal like super fast, but the fact that we already have 35 is, uh, you know, leaps and bounds above where we were before. We can actually now start to uh, expand out our refined storage system uh, quite quickly. Now, before I start pumping everything out of here, the last thing that I do want to uh, work on is this uh, lava. So 
We want lava coming in at the top. And then we need another barrel and we need some water to be able to fully automate the production of obsidian. So let's go ahead and grab two buckets. One of which we're going to, and also a barrel, which I don't think we have. You uh, cannot use the wooden barrel, by the way, for obsidian. We could use the wooden barrel for what, uh, for the clay. So we could have just used the wooden barrel for the clay and the stone barrel uh, for the obsidian. But given that they are fairly easy uh, to make, we'll just go ahead and take one lava. And then in here, we're going to take some water. Uh, it does seem to still be having that uh, issue, unfortunately, where the unlimited water source kind of breaks when I'm not around, which is unfortunate. Again, probably means we're going to have to rethink our, uh, our tree growing strategy. For now, though, over in here, uh, let's put a tunnel down. Let's do it, like, over here, I think. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that. Actually, hmm. I'm thinking about where I want these items to go, like, where we're going to pull everything out, so. Because the system of making clay here, or making obsidian even, sorry, is not that difficult a system. So I think we'll put this here. I'm going to try and be space efficient, even though we don't need to be, so we have more space in the future for uh, for, for other things, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to move this. I'm going to put the tunnel like here. This is the tunnel that's going to bring lava in. So at the top, that's the one up the, uh, the fluid duct. Like that. That should put lava into that tank as soon as we uh, configure a server on the outside. Uh, then we're going to have water on the top of that. So for now, we'll put like some cobblestone right about there. We'll put the water there, and that is going to produce obsidian, right? And uh, we'll then pull that out, and we'll have that go into a, uh, a cache. I see no reason not to put a cache uh, just like right here next to the uh, the cache for uh, sulfur. So we'll have just another one right next to that. That's going to fill up with obsidian, and then uh, we'll have all of those pump out uh, to where they need to go. And in fact, chat, I might not even bother with pumping them out, because we are kind of running out of space downstairs. And so what I think I might do instead is I might begin looking at, uh, at kind of piping our refined storage system into our subcubes so that we don't have to have everything um, in the uh, in the overworld. I think that's going to make things a lot cleaner going forward uh, because having all of this stuff, like all of these, uh, you know, caches here and all these caches here and then maybe like four more caches or five more caches um, over here as well would make life, you know, it, it would really fill up this, this 9x9 cube that we're in very quickly. So I think instead having our refined storage cables go through the tunnels into the systems and then using the external storages in there would uh, would make life, I think, a whole heck of a lot easier. So, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We need more iron, though, for now. Let's go and smelt some of this up. And, of course, we will also make another... Uh, we'll upgrade this server right away. Uh, actually, we could just make the higher tier one, right? Yeah, I g <laughs> that's me making iron. You can just go straight in with the higher tier of server. So once we have that, we will extract from the tank. Always active. And that should start to fill this up with lava. And this should start to make obsidian. It has indeed. We then just need one more cache chat. And I think that's pretty much everything automated. Now, again, none of it is automated to the point where it's coming in insanely fast. But the fact that it's all automated means that, you know, as we do other things, over time, the, uh, the backlog of what we have will build up. And uh, hopefully when we need those products, we'll just have a large amount of them uh, lying around in the caches, ready to go. That's the idea, at least. Much like with our um, Coco here, which is now up to 750, which is very nice indeed. So cache right there. That should get some obsidian just as soon as we set this to extract. Like so. I love that that changes color <laughs> when it's full of lava and then full of uh, obsidian. And then any second now, we should see this fill up and we can lock it. And there we go. We have obsidian being made. Uh, this is going to come in quite fast. We're going to get 80 uh, obsidian uh, very quickly. And then it's going to slow down to a crawl once we get uh, to the point where the magma crucible is our, uh, you know, bottleneck. But uh, for now, chat, that is working quite nicely. So now that we have 67 bone meal, that's coming in nice and quick. And now that we also have a good extra amount of clay lying around, what we should be able to do, chat, is uh, upgrade our refined storage system, which, uh, as you'll notice if you've been watching the stream, is uh, currently quite limited on space. We're constantly filling up the system to the point where we have to take certain things out, and it it's just a whole, you know, pain in the backside. So, the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to uh, grab some of the string 
from downstairs. We're going to make a bunch of the uh, the binder. And we're going to try and make, hopefully, a good chunk of storage disks. Or at least, you know, one or two extra storage disks uh, to give us a little bit of space to work with. After that, we're going to work on some external storage to hopefully make our lives a little easier in terms of running backwards and forwards to get all of the uh, all of the items that we need. So if we look at uh, the old storage disks right here, let's say we want to make another 4K one because we already have uh, most of the components required for uh, the storage part here. We have everything apart from the basic processor. The reason for that is uh, we're just missing that, uh, that binding there in the top left. And for that binding, we need the porcelain clay. Thankfully, now we have automated bone meal and clay. We can make a full stack of porcelain clay and not really have to worry about it. Uh, that then allows us to make a ton of this binding. Now that we have string automated, we can also go ahead and uh, do that without having to worry either. And uh, at that point, we should be able to make quite a few of these. I'm going to make just as many as we can and uh, begin smelting all of those up. As soon as we have our first four, we can go ahead and craft up our uh, very own 4K drive which I think it should hold us over for the time being in terms of uh, internal storage, because the next thing we're going to do, of course, is make those external storage devices, which are also going to allow us to free up more space, because hopefully what will happen is going forward, whenever I put something like redstone into the system, instead of the redstone getting dumped into one of these disks, the redstone will automatically be placed into its own cache, which will be part of our refined storage network. Uh, to make that happen, we are going to have to mess around a little bit with uh, priorities, but that should not be too difficult for us to do. So let's grab you. Now, if we want to put an external storage device on every single one of our caches, how many external storage devices are we going to need? I think the answer is a lot. <laughs> Probably more than we... Uh, I was going to say maybe more than we can feasibly make, but that might not be true. But down here, we've got, what, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 caches. We then have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then in here, we've just made five more. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We do also have some in here, but I don't really think those necessarily need to be connected. Uh, and in an ideal world, we'd also connect up these ones, but I don't think those are strictly necessary either right now. Uh, nor do I really think that the one for uh, the cold cook is, is strictly necessary either. Uh, but let's see if we can't make like 25 of these. Uh, that is going to be quite expensive. And uh, in most part, due to the fact that it requires 25 diamond nuggets. So... To do that, we're going to have to process a lot of this coal coke and try and get those 25 diamond nuggets. Thankfully, uh, we do have 750 uh, coal coke now. So if we do process a good chunk of that, I think we're going to be pretty much there. I, I think we're going to get close to it. Eleven. And boom. All right, so let's make a few of these, if we can, which we definitely should be able to. And let's put it on some of the items that we use most regularly. So I think I definitely want one on redstone. I'm probably not going to bother putting them on anything other than redstone just yet, because all of this is currently in dust form. So if we want to use it, uh, we still have to take it out and smelt it first anyway. So I'm not too bothered about, about that. Um, I do want one on wood. Again, we're kind of running out of... Uh, we're not space here, aren't we? We do need some cables. Um, again, I might end up moving a lot of those caches kind of back into their own compact machines. I do think, though, if I'm not mistaken, that you can transfer the, um, the refined storage cabling through compact machines, I think. So... Of course, we're making our tunnels the new way, right? We're not making it the old way now, so we're making it with uh, Combat Machine Wall, Redstone, and Hoppers. Hoppers, of course, we don't have. Do we have the inner folk wood? Uh, we can make a hopper, I guess. It's not, it's not crazy, but it probably should be enough, actually. We only need the one uh, for the time being. I don't know if this lever down here, by the way, just turns the animation off for the... Uh, for the miniaturization field off, it just turns it off, like, entirely. I guess we can find out. I assume it turns it off entirely. Yeah, okay. You didn't see that, chat. <laughs> All right, 
So I think, chat, what we could do here is, for example, I'm going to move this lever, just because I think we need the space here. So I'm going to put the lever for now. Right about that, turn that off. And I think what we'll do is uh, we'll get more cable in a second, but we're going to run this pretty much right around the room because this needs to get all the way over to the uh, the controller, which is, of course, um, all the way up here. We might have to reconfigure this as well if we need those sides in the future. But for now, let me quickly grab a few more of the old refined storage cabling, which uh, which is in glass. There we go. And uh, once we have that chat, we should be able to uh, to make this work. So we'll do this. We'll get more cabling down here. What we'll do is we'll connect this up. Like so, just a temporary connection for now. And then here, the bottom is where the power is actually, or the, the device is actually going in. So I think what we can do is essentially, even though it's like super janky, is for example, if we wanted obsidian and sand accessible, I think that we could do something like this and have a tunnel here that connects to the bottom. And now all of that 1,300 sand should be available to the system, as should all of our redstone. And uh, if we were to connect the wood up here, that should also be connected as well. Now, I do want to connect the wood up, but uh, doing so would require a little bit of janky cabling. So we have the redstone, does that sand not work? It looks like it's working. We have 105 obsidian. That should hopefully be going up slowly but surely. Uh, the sand should also be going up slowly but surely. It is. We just saw it go up uh, by one right there. Last modified 20 minutes ago. That's interesting. Uh, but there we go. We have both of those connected, which is very nice indeed. So now that, that works, uh, we should definitely eat, as chat is uh, telling me to do. But uh, now that we know that works, I'm, I'm a lot more tempted to move items into their respective storage drawers. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, compact machines. Like, I think we could probably get away with, like, moving all of these caches back inside here. You know, we do have quite a bit of space in here. We don't have a ton of space, but we have space uh, to put the, the caches in there. And then just have, uh, instead of having pipes bring them out, we can have the, the cabling from refined storage go in there and, you know, have storage buses to bring all of this stuff to us. Right? Like, the alternative for now is just to do something like that which is like super janky, or try and run the cabling like along the roof and down, you know, it does work, but it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a jump every time you want to get anywhere. So yeah, I think I will do some, uh, some work to try and move some of these machines into, uh, into smaller spaces. Uh, the crusher. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's move. Let's reconfigure some stuff. So I'm going to go tear down the coke ovens. I think the coke ovens have, have, have served their purpose. They've seen their day and they are no longer required. Uh, this also doesn't need to be there anymore. It's not really helping too much. And uh, I might leave the blast furnace in here. I'm not too sure. It depends if we have space. But I will move the crusher in here. And I might even look to automate that as well. So we can so we don't have to pop in, if you know what I mean, to, uh, to actually use the crusher. We can just do it from the outside. So I think what we'll probably do, most certainly, is we're going to have, of course, power running over you know, to the crusher that way. Then the items do come out here. I'm just thinking of how we could potentially automate this chat because in an ideal world i can just put items in a chest and then they go into the small compact machine they get crushed and then they come out in their crushed form right in an ideal world i don't have to go into the crusher to make that work now how do i do that yeah, I guess we just need two tunnels, right? One, one to take in and one to take out. Uh, so tunnel-wise, let me go and get uh, another hopper, I guess. We should also get some more iron, because I think we are a little low on it upstairs. We do need to make the arc furnace, I guess, actually. That's a thing we are going to have to do soon, I believe. Um, I don't think we're that far away, Chef, from being able to get a bigger room again. Like, the next tier of compact machine is uh, this one right here, uh, which requires just six glitched large machine. So I think in the next stream, we might end up looking at making this um, poop, uh, the pressure poop injector. This guy right here, this monstrosity, uh, that's going to allow us to uh, turn 9x9 machines into glitched large machines. And once we have six of those, we can then make a 13x13, uh, 13 13, or sorry, an 11x11 11 11 machine. 
which um might be worth it. It's a little janky because it means once again moving into a bigger room, but it might be useful. Although maybe not. Maybe maybe we'll just look at. Uh... Oh no, we need it before we can get to the high impact compactor. And it's need of a quest anyway. Uh, also, I completely forgot, chat, but we should definitely 100% make the uh, crucible as well, uh, because that will make our lava production so much faster. Our obsidian right now is needlessly slow, because our obsidian at the moment is um, limited by how fast the lava is made. We can make that so much faster with crucibles. Oh, can you hop into the um, into the crusher? You can pipe into the top middle of the crusher. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Okay, thank you. That is good. Good to know. All right. So you and you give the lever a quick flick. Oh, we can't do that, eh? <laughs> that makes sense. I can't pick that up either, eh? Also not allowed. All right. Boop. I am a fan of that animation. So, how do I want to do this? I guess we can have the buy, like the finished product. I think I'm going to move this room. This room is entirely useless now, actually, so I'll probably just move it over here for now, and we'll, we'll deal with that in the future. Uh, but I'm thinking I want the front to be accessible so I can still get in. Uh, but we'll probably have, like, a, just a, a chest here with the uh, the output. Uh, now, for the input chest, I think we have to have, a, like, a pipe that pumps into it, right? Essentially, what I'm thinking, chat, is we have one chest here that gets all the outputs and then the other chest is going to have to go i think likely right about here for the inputs so that we can post it in there it gets pulled in um, or i guess retrieved in however it, uh, it goes about doing it and then once it's in we then want it to go out i don't know if you can do this i don't think you can i think we have to put a chest there and then uh, pull out of the chest to actually uh to take things out of the machine but up here Let's have a tunnel on the wall. That tunnel wants to connect to the item duct. Yeah, that's right. And then we're going to do something like this. There we go. That should hopefully pump the items into the crusher. Uh, at that point, we have a chest at the front right there. That chest then goes out and down into another tunnel. That tunnel is connected to the chest like that. And I think that might be about right. We, of course, do need to get uh, another chest to make that actually, you know, come together. But I think we uh, should be good. Uh, we also need a uh, servo up there, but that's fine. Like that. Um, what can we crush? Let's crush some, like, iron. Does that work? It does. We do need to power this, though, still, which is likely what's causing the, the trouble here. We also need a servo there, although I guess the uh, retriever could do the same trick. Um... We have power. So I'm thinking we can just probably replace these two here with the old uh, hardened flux ducts. There we go. It looks like the iron has made its way in. Which is wonderful. There we go. And uh, yeah, all we need now is a uh, server to extract. And we're good to go. Nice, 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 nice. Just one less step in the chain going forward. We don't have to jump in and out of the uh, the block every time if we want to get the uh, the crusher going. As always, I should just go for the highest tier one. There's no point making the lower ones. It's just wasteful, Isaac, you fool. Boom. And boom. Nice. And that should end up over here. It does. So, chat. We're crushing iron unnecessarily here, but if we put one iron in there, it gets taken away. It gets crushed. And ideally, it comes back out into this chest any second now. Any second now. Hey! <laughs> Alright, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, honestly. <laughs> I thought it would be a lot faster than that, but it, uh, it worked. It totally worked.